We're taking a look at the middle of the truck driver position that Tesla has come up with and, and so the, the, some of the implications of this. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. If this is your first time viewing one of our videos, please like and subscribe as well as hit the bell so you'll be notified when we have new things coming out. We usually post two or th at least three times a week, sometimes five, and this will give you a chance to not miss anything, especially now that we're right on the cusp of Model 3 coming out and there are a lot of exciting new products. Today's talk is focused on the form factor of sort of middle of the of the truck positioning of the driver. I was sort of there's some folks that mentioned it that are on my page as well as the fact that I thought it was an interesting shift by Tesla to make that move. I then sort of talking with some of my PhD buddies as well as uh, doing some research online to figure out who was actually doing this and what came up was that Walmart in fact had made an effort uh, to come out with a truck uh, called the the wave uh, back in 2014 and in the case of this truck it does look kind of funky as you'll see in the b-roll I will include this time I apologize it wasn't on the original video so what's interesting about the wave is that Walmart was basically using a number of methods to try to improve the overall cost of the vehicle among those uh, they actually we're doing better aerodynamics on the front of the truck, which included uh, a sort of a, a different kind of a turbine. It, this turbine not being the regular d large diesel engine um, left room to do some experiments to get a more aerodynamic front of the vehicle, which resulted in better fuel economy. According to some of the stuff I read, they were able to get 13 miles a gallon, uh, but clearly you know, after working with Peter Belt and a bunch of other partners, for some reason the project didn't go anywhere. Um, I was sort of fascinated because um, this gave the video from this, as you'll see, gives us an opportunity to take a look over the driver's shoulder at what things look like from that middle position. So, from what we can devise from Tesla, the motors for the electric vehicle don't require as much space as the 2,000 parts that go in the typical ICE engine. So all of a sudden you now have a large bay in front. In the cars that bay is being used to carry cargo you know, as another storage facility. But in the case of the truck, by sort of leveraging that space and putting the driver in the middle it allows you to taper the vehicle in a way that sets it up more like how a fighter pilot looks. So how it looks from a fighter. So if you look out the window, out the windshield, you'll notice that the structure isn't as pronounced when you're looking at front, but from, from the inside, you'll notice that there's more of a sort of a bullet or shape that helps generate um, a better profile for the wind and therefore reduce costs. Now, as you'll see, this truck isn't as radical as the nose of the original Wave vehicle, but it did sort of throw some interesting numbers out. The engineers involved indicated that uh, they were able to get a 20% reduction in uh, wind resistance and a 10% reduction in fuel consumption driven by this different shape. And I would say that from looking at Tesla, I would say between 50 and 70 percent of that gain is being achieved by the different manner in which Tesla is sort of designing the front of their truck uh, to, to sort of manage uh, wind better. I'm a big fan of Mercedes-Benz and they preceded Tesla in bringing out their electric vehicles by a year or two and I was kind of surprised that they in on their futuristic trucks as well as electric trucks They've shown no inclination to sort of shake things up, to get better aerodynamics, to pick up uh, mileage. 
most of the vehicles they've put out have been either, you know, kind of short range. Uh, the latest truck that they've brought out that's electric with an 18650 battery, as we've reported, it about has about 200 miles of range on it, which is actually pretty good. But over that kind of distance is when you'll start seeing significant impact of wind resistance on the vehicle. But uh, Tesla or Mercedes-Benz elected not to modify sort of the truck design. And in fact, they're um, sort of steadfastly maintaining sort of non-electric uh, optimizing uh, trucking sort of form factor. I suppose, or I'm really thinking about the fact that as, you, as we've discussed in the past, one of the things that goes on with trucks is the fact that if you're in a long haul situation, having a very sort of long nose to the truck is actually a good deal. You get a, a longer wheelbase, so it's a more comfortable ride for the driver. Um, you know, there's other elements to sort of that long nose on front. When you go to a sort of a flat nose on the front of the truck, the aerodynamics aren't as good. But if you're if the truck has to operate in tight spaces in cities and so forth, that short wheelbase makes it easy to turn, so less cumbersome for the driver and less challenging to get that inventory to whatever its destination may be. So, in fact, the record setter, I think, for Tesla or for Mercedes-Benz is a Freightliner product that they came out with, and it actually has a fairly long nose that allows you to sort of work with, um, you know, an aero profile uh, perhaps not as good as Tesla, but definitely, you know, to work on an aero profile. So I'm sort of dragging out my point. I've got the B-roll running so you guys can see what it, it looks like. Sort of the biggest thing I was wondering about and wanted to take a look at is what did I think about the... Um, so the big analysis, which you'll be seeing as part of the B-roll, is... What's kind of going on with um, the driver in the middle position on the road? If you have this central position, it's different than what's been there for 50 or 100 years with the driver sitting on the left or the right. And is it a good or a bad thing? My reaction to it initially was I thought it was a bad thing because, you know, if there was, if it was a good idea to switch, one of the big players would have already done it. And Tesla's kind of new to the block and making significant changes that, you know, kind of feel like they're overstepping their bounds. Um, as you'll notice, when you look out, look out of the wave from the central position of the truck driver, it actually makes sense. Um, I can remember when I was a little kid, one of my problems with my with learning how to drive, I anticipated was that if you sat on one side of a big car, you'd never be able to see the other side of the car in terms of where it was in controlling it. As I got my license and became a fairly decent driver, I kind of learned it wasn't a big deal because once you know what half the car is going to do, you can have a pretty good idea what the other half is going to do as well, especially if you stay close to the, the running line. But after seeing how this looks, in the wave and therefore how it might look with the Tesla, I actually think there's a lot of people that are going to adopt this as a solution because it um, it looks good, seems to work well. The next issue that I was thinking about that might be a problem that I was sort of anticipating was the fact that there's also an issue of once you go to the center of the truck, you can't glance out the window left or right to identify sort of people or other issues there. Uh, the mirrors, as you know, for the longer haul truck have been removed <clears throat> and replaced with cameras. And it helps with aerodynamics, one. It also is kind of interesting because, in theory, it should be a bad idea because you really can't see out the window. But the good part of it is that um, all of a sudden you have a fairly large screen to work with to be able to look around what's outside the truck and be able to understand sort of where you are and what might be around you and impacting you. And so I would say that um, <clears throat> it's actually is pretty good. I, I drove 
and X for about an hour, 45 minutes, or uh, and Model X. And I was really surprised initially. I was like, you know, what is this, a giant screen with my ability to look through the rearview mirror at vehicles coming at me? And after 15 or 20 minutes, I was impressed because I didn't actually have to look at the screen anymore. It's large enough so I can almost pick it up from my peripheral vision what's going on behind the vehicle. And I think once truckers are able to use their screens efficiently, they'll actually find that they know more about what's moving around the truck than they did when they actually had mirrors, uh, because it, it actually does work pretty well. Um, despite all this, I want to let you know that I'm maintaining my devotion to side view mirrors and no computers. So all these new fangled young whippersnappers getting rid of time-honored traditions needs to stop immediately. Because just because it's a better form factor and works better does not mean that we should uh, bail out on our elders and move on to new technology. So, uh, Elon, give us back our mirrors and dump them computers uh, or monitor screens so we can get back to the old days when we had fossil fuels sort of killing the planet, etc., versus moving on to the new, uh, which includes every effort to reduce the carbon footprint of vehicles which actually helps out the planet and all of us sort of be healthier, live healthier going forward. I'm being facetious. Uh, please uh, don't take me too seriously at the back end here. At any rate, um, I want to thank you for taking time out uh, to spend some time again with us. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Sorry about the uh, B-roll mix-up. And uh, we look forward to our next dialogue, probably looking more around of really a want to take a look at the next video I'm going to be shooting focuses on uh, the early adopting customers, given that we've posted on what it looked like uh, in terms of the pricing of the new truck. So uh, look forward to our next opportunity. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, Max Gut. Au revoir, la hitra haute, Hafez.